came from is uh, it's a very small village. It's actually it's 40, it's like 60 kilometers from Birmingham, okay. uh, about where I was born. And um, so there was not many people into well, heavy metal. A friend, Mitch Dickinson, who I, who I was in a band with a couple of times, he was a guitarist for Heresy. He moved from Birmingham to the village where I lived. So we grew up listening to you know, rock and metal. And so yeah, it was very closed you know, from, from uh, big, well, even from the big city. So perhaps you know that kind of influences you know why you get into that stuff. I mean, also I'm a little bit older, so I grew up with you know in the early 70s. You know, bands like Slade and Sweet were popular, all guitar music, and uh, there was a, a thing called Top of the Pops, which is like a weekly pop channel. You know? and the theme tune was Led Zeppelin, a lot of love. So I was I was exposed to guitar, yeah, from a very early age. I think. Mm. So I kind of think that had an influence on me because I hear the guitar and I'm like, I like that sound, you know. So I like Slayer, I like the Swede, and I go into that, and I go into Judas Priest and Sabbath. And but it's a certain kind of person. Like me and my friend Mitch wanted to do more extreme stuff. Some of my friends were happy with, you know, Slayer and Metallica. They were happy at that level. And my friend, me and my friend, were really fast. We went to see them play, we became friends, and I joined the band, you know. Um, so the, it, the history is very, very complicated around 86, 87, 88. But I think because we all came from different backgrounds, and Mickey the drummer was always trying to be faster. But his style is very, um, you know, he changes tempos quite, quite, quite uh, sporadically. So I think John Zorn was attracted to that, because it wasn't kind of like the one particular tempo was very different. I think they're coming in from the outside listening to Napalm Death. I mean, to us, Napalm Death was like a very fast, brutal, hardcore band. But we also had like, like, lots of industrial, lots of amount. Everything was coming in, but for someone like John Zorn, you know, he may, be, he may have been into punk, I think he was, Sonic Eden, and stuff like that, but he, he, he probably heard Napalm in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. He heard these small songs, short songs, small bursts. You know, Mickey was doing very different tempos. So to him, it was like, well, this is something different. I think people heard that when they bought them in the first couple of albums, you know. And they probably and also it was John Peel embraced the band. Therefore the indie alternative scene really got into us. So even though to us we were a fast hardcore band, we were being perceived differently by lots of people. True. I mean, you know, there's many cities in many countries. You know, um, you can look at like Dortmund in Germany, like you spawn like Sodom and Great and bands like that. It's kind of an industrial town, I guess. You know? Birmingham was industrial. The surrounding areas were industrial. But I think you know that extreme music attracts people in a particular way. You want to rebel. You want to, you know, it's um, an escapism. You know, I mean, not just in Birmingham towards Stoke on Trent where Discharge came from. You know, you know so. It's got to, you know, up in Scotland you have the exploited, I mean, everywhere really. I think um, it just so happened at that particular point, the earache from Nottingham signed, you know, signed those bands, and the bands are closely linked in, like, you know, in the regards the area, I think. I thought, you know, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, you know, you, the oppression, the industry, the organisation, I mean, yeah, those things are prominent. It goes way back to Sabbath and before that, but, you know, when you're young and you've got nothing, and you, you know, extreme music is attractive to you, you kind of embrace it, I think. Or music in general, I mean, if it fills your heart with something, you're going to, you know, you're going to be into that. Do you, do you see a follow-up from, like, Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and uh, everything is kind of related to Birmingham, isn't it? Like, and, well, I mean, and then, the West Midlands area. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, again, I mean, you know, everyone says, oh, yeah, it's the, you know, the industrialization of the areas and stuff, but, I don't know. I mean, I think when you're younger, you just, again, if you have nothing, you know, and uh, the, the bands of the time speak to you in a particular way. Now, everyone was into extreme music at that time. I mean, people were freaking out to Duran Duran. Duran Duran are from Birmingham, you know. 
you know, UB40 at the moment, but then UB40 was speaking to the youth as well, but they were speaking to them through reggae. So it's what you know, what you grasp and what you take. It could be, as I say, UB40 set in the 80s, it's still massively, massively popular, but, but um, a completely different land. So I don't know. It could be the area, but many areas around England, you know, we're going through hard times. When you're involved in it, it's hard to to, to make a complete opinion of it because it's a, to me it's always a progression. When I got into music, it was I'd say heavy metal, into punk, metal, and punk mixed together. And it was a natural progression. Obviously, back then you were tape trading. We were buying vinyl, but vinyl is very popular again now. The internet's different. You know, it's opened the world to listen to wherever they want, when they want. You know, and that may be good, may be bad. But I mean, music will always progress further and cross over and subgenre, sub, subgeneralize. Really. Um, and I think I don't know. I mean, in some ways, it's not. Um, I mean, people, people look for vinyl all of a sudden again, you know, it's like a almost a regression, but I don't look at it, I'm not, I'm not like I'm not gazing into this crystal ball where I'm thinking, well, where's it all going to go? I mean, music just keeps on evolving, you know, the more people still want to play music. I mean, live music still as popular as it ever was, and so, so if people still want to do that, and they do, I mean, you know, it's going to keep on going on. I mean, you're always, Probably every 20, 30 years there's going to be a band that maybe sounds like something 20 years ago, but that's just only natural to be going to take it from everywhere. It's hard for me to say where is it going to go. Uh, with Napalm, uh, I, I kind of write all the time, I guess. So usually when an album's recorded I have something left over that I never used. So I use that as a starting point for the next one. So it's kind of ongoing for me. But um, you know, we're gonna, I guess, experiment in some respects, you know, more. Even though the last few albums are like discordant riffs, it's probably gonna be more of them. Probably stranger timings in some, in some ways, some slower stuff. Maybe bringing some different sounds, vocally, um, to acoustic wise, you know. And in some, in some ways, probably embrace what Napalm Death was doing in the early 80s as well. Yeah. And that will kind of come into play, probably musically. Um, it will be extreme, you know, in different directions, and also, you know, that it will still be fast at times. And um, Barney has some concepts already lyrically for the next record, you know, which yeah, he would tell you about. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, a good, it's just another step for me, really. Um, it doesn't really stop. You know, I can't imagine it stopping just yet. You know. And then what I do other musically, I like other kinds of music and I just like, you know, if I'm with friends, I just like to form bands, you know. Sometimes I kind of go, fuck, I wish I had done that because now I'm going to go and tour it. And I've already been playing for 150 shows already with Napalm, but you know, you do it. You need to get into, I guess, kind of more guitar-based ambient stuff for a few years, you know. So, which, you know, a lot of people do. Um, kind of, I can't think of the word to describe it, just kind of very... Um, but just loops, you know, the build and build and build. Kind of shoegazy or maybe in places, but kind of like I like I, I like to layer guitars. Start with a simple guitar line that builds and builds and stuff like that. Really, um, purely as a just as something for me to as a release. Really, if people like it, then that's cool. But I've been meaning to do that as a, as a another pastime at some point. You know, um, when I get some time, really sit down on a Sunday and just make a weird riff and then build on it. And play and stuff like that. That's the kind of thing I'd like to get into as well. I mean, some of that stuff, you know, like Atheist Run, um, mor uh, Morale, and then Napalm is, is, is again similar. It's loop building, you know, but mm -hmm. it's more extreme. It would be more probably mellow, not as harsh. Well, what happened with Mitch? Why is he playing? Um, he's just, he lives in the countryside and I can't get him to come out, you know. I mean, he's, he's got a lot of riffs for an unseen terror record, which. You know, he's fucking 50 next year, so I don't know. I ask him, but he just does, you know, he's, he's happy where he's at and doing his thing, and maybe at some point. 
I mean, I, I probably have another couple of years before I can play drums anymore, and the fucking knees will just give out. So. I don't know, we'll see. My wife voted for me while I was away. I voted to stay, to stay in. Um, I think it's a. People aren't seeing the bigger picture, I think, personally. And other things like immigration and getting in the way of the real issues of what the EU's about. I don't know. It's going to be interesting times, but. Um, Are you um, feeling positive or negative towards it? I'm sort of in the middle. I just want to see what's happening. I feel kind of the same. I mean, if I sit back and get negative about it, then, you know, that is. In, Interferes with living your life. You've got to live your life. There's always going to be politics. There's always going to be bullshit people around you trying to force completely retarded ideas on you. That's the world. It has been forever. You know, you have your voice to rebel, your voice to say something. Hopefully, you can try and change it. But you know, you've got to live your life as well. I mean, I'm just going to wait and see what's going on. But I voted to stay. That was me. Massively changed my perspective. I mean, I'm not very supportive of what I do. Um, I'm probably not the as wild as I was 15 or 20 years ago. As regards, I don't drink anymore. Uh, it's been health issues, you know. Nothing to do? No. Um, but, you know, that's something I have to do, really. Um, but I have to keep busy. I have to play music. I mean, well, I always wanted to play music because that's what I love to do. But it's too late for me to get it. Job, a job somewhere else. I mean, no one would fucking employ me, so I, I'm grinding for life, basically, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, my family, it's like, well, you know, as long as I can, but it's, you know, it's all part of the, the thing. Well, you did help uh, create a genre or a couple, so... Well, so I did a lot of bands, a lot of people, you know, uh, so we were in a small part in a whole big thing. A big part. <laughs> <laughs> There's many people who contributed to that. You know, many past members and they've gone there them. They were doing different things, they were very instrumental in making it what it is. Would you play again with Nick, for instance? Yeah, of course. Really? I texted him a few, few right. months ago. I don't want to. I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a demo right. from. Um, I got a CD from a band in Germany a couple of years ago. It was kind of like uh, Godflesh Melvins with a saxophone player and something about it I liked. So I sent Nicky a text. I'm like, hey man, let's just get together and do this weird. Thing. And he said, yeah, I'm up for it, you know, in his usual text with loads of capitals. Capital, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I haven't seen him for a while, but of course, you know, it'd be nice to play again with him. I got Bill Steer up on stage last year. On the, and Lee, uh, Lee did the Hellfest yeah, stuff, didn't he, or something? So, you know, there's still plenty of years left for the things to happen. That's great. Thanks so much, Shane. Hey. Oh.